Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jordan. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for stopping by. All right, so you clicked on this video. It was because you're interested in the Canon 28 millimeter F 2.8 for the Canon RF mount. So let's go ahead and dive into this right now, starting off with price. So the price that I found is $299 on Best Buy and Canon USA. On B&H, Amazon, and Adorama, you're looking at $299 flat. Obviously, you're going to have to include shipping and all that stuff. But those are the prices. I think for $300, bucks, it's not a bad deal. The lens itself is a 28mm f2.8. Like I mentioned, it is for full frame cameras. So it does work with my EOS RP and my EOS R5. As far as the aperture goes, it has a seven rounded blade diaphragm. It goes from f2.8 to f22. The minimum focusing distance Canon claims is 9.1 inches or 0.23 centimeters. I got from the sensor plane on my camera to Marty McFly's face was eight and five eighths of an inch or around there. I did hold up a measuring tape to it and I found that it was pretty close to that. So it's actually a little bit less or more depending on I guess how you look at it you get a little bit of a closer focusing distance than what Canon claims which I think is pretty good now as far as the focusing motor goes it does have the old-fashioned STM autofocus motors and it also has a Canon super spectra coating or the SSC to minimize ghosting and flaring and we'll talk about that here in a little bit now as far as the construction goes it has 55 millimeter filter thread it has that pancake body design, pretty much like the old EFS 24 mil or the old EF 40 mil. There is no weather sealing, but it does have a control slash focusing ring on the front, just like all of the new RF lenses that Canon comes out with. It also, which I like, has a autofocus, manual focus, control switch switch on the side. So with the 16 mil and the 50 mil, I don't like that you have to go into the menu to turn the autofocus on and off. I think that Canon should have always included a switch on side for controlling that, and that's just my opinion, but this one has that, and I think that that's a good start for Canon. They should include that on all of their lenses. Now, as far as the autofocusing goes, you won't notice any of the autofocusing noise while recording video, but in photo, the noise is noticeable. I tried this on both my R5 and my EOS RP, and the noise is the same no matter how you have the autofocus drive set up, set in the camera. So just take that into account. If you're trying to shoot some quiet photos in a low key place, you're definitely gonna have that autofocus noise along with the shutter sound. So just take that into account as well. But if you're recording video, you're not gonna notice any of that autofocus noise, which is nice. Now let's go ahead and dive into the lens test. So at f2.8, the center is sharp, but it does have a pretty heavy vignette and barrel distortion. The corners are soft, and there is some color fringing on contrasting edges. You really kind of have to punch in to notice it a lot. Um, in my testing, I didn't really notice a whole lot of ghosting, and I didn't really notice a whole, whole lot of color fringing. But like I said, it is on some highly contrasting edges, so take that into account. The lens will stay this way all the way up until around f4.5 where the vignette disappears and around f8 in my test is where the image is sharp corner to corner. And around f18 in my testing is where the softness due to diffraction kicks back in and it softens up the edges. As far as the bouquet goes, at f2.8 the bouquet is cat eye shaped or oblong shaped. Stopping down to around f3.5, the bouquet takes on a much more rounded shape with a slight hexagonal edge where you might not notice it until you zoom in on the image. At f5, the bouquet becomes smaller, but it's still holding on to that same shape at f3.5. So if you don't like that oblong or cat's eye shaped, just stop it down a little bit to f3.5 and you'll get rid of that with a little bit more of a rounder bouquet. Now, I just wanna go ahead and talk about this lens from a perspective as somebody who I think would probably want this lens. 
So f2.8 is pretty good. It does have a pretty bright aperture for what it is, especially on the newer Canon EOS R systems. You have a better control over that higher ISO with minimal noise. So just take that into account, especially if you're shooting you know, stuff for like YouTube or if you're doing indoors, you're able to pump that ISO up a little bit more with that brighter aperture at f2.8. Um, I shot all the images with the lens profile corrections turned off. So any of that barrel distortion or, or whatever is basically tacked onto the image until you turn on the lens profiles in the camera or if you do it through Lightroom. And yes, Lightroom had the 28 millimeter f2.8 in the lens profile section. So take that into account. I did a bunch of street photography with this lens. And as far as the shape goes, it is really, really nice to have that small pancake factor at 28 millimeters with that f2.8. It was a breeze to walk around with. I really didn't feel like I had any weight on my shoulder and uh, it was nice. I mean, especially if you're doing street photography. Uh, I think for astrophotography, it's pretty decent. If you're doing real estate, I think that this could be a good smaller option. Like let's say if you do real estate with like a 14 or 16 mil and you want something small, but you don't have to bring a zoom lens. I think that you could just easily throw this in your bag, throw it onto a gimbal or onto your camera and then snap some photos that way. This way you get a little bit more of a, a little narrower than a 14 or 16 if you're shooting real estate. I think you get some pretty decent detail photos with it. Uh, it doesn't have any, like I said, it doesn't have any weather sealing and it doesn't have any image stabilization built into it. So take that into account. I think 28 millimeters is too like too narrow of a wide angle lens to do any sort of vlogging with. But if you wanted a wider angle lens for doing talking headshots for like YouTube or for like, a, you know, like interviews or documentaries, you wanted a smaller form factor lens. But uh, I will say if you're using it for talking headshots, the lens protrudes in and out when you have it on autofocus. So if you're going to put any sort of like a teleprompter on it, it's going to kind of like pull on that lens barrel that's coming in and out of the lens. So I don't know. That's the same reason why I don't use my Canon RF 50 mil for my talking headshots for YouTube. Uh, I prefer the 50 mil look, but in all honesty, it just, I don't think is good for that barrel to have all that weight on the front of it. So like if it's, Focusing in and out, obviously you have a lot of weight on the front, so it's kind of pulling that down in this way. And I don't necessarily like that idea, but if you're doing like some just kind of freestyle where you don't have to have a teleprompter or something on it for YouTube or for talking headshots, documentaries and stuff like that, I think that this is a good option to throw in your bag. So if you want to have a wider field of view with a smaller form factor, you can put the camera a little bit closer and you can get a little bit shallower of a depth of field or a shallower depth of field with that f2.8 for talking headshots and stuff. Uh, I did street photography with it. I mean, if you're doing Astro, I think it's a good option. It's 300 bucks. So if you don't necessarily have the, you know, the budget for that, which I mean, to me, $300 is a lot of money. Um, if you're willing to purchase an older lens, you could probably get the old 24 millimeter EFS lens, which will on a full frame crop the sensor into a 1.6 times crop or if you can find the old canon 40 mil ef lens which is a full frame 40 mil i think that that's another good option i mean obviously that's a little bit more narrow but it's got that same form factor the only problem is is you have to adapt it uh for street photography i love this this lens it's it's excellent i mean it has killer sharpness uh even with that barrel distortion and the heavy vignette I kind of like that look. I like vignetted, vignetted looks on photos and stuff, so I don't mind it. The distortion kind of messes things up a little bit, but in all honesty, I mean, if you're doing street photography, you're going to edit all those photos anyways into your style, and you're going to add you know, lens profile corrections and all that stuff. Like I do, I add lens profile correction, and then I add vignette back into it, or, I mean, I could just leave it off, but... Anyways, um, I think for $300, this is not a bad lens to have, especially if you love prime lenses. Uh, I personally would have liked to have seen something like a 28 mil or even 24, which I know Canon has the RF 24. Um, 
even like a 2.2 maybe or like 2.5 i mean obviously f2.8 is not that much further off but i think if you had like a 28 or a 24 mil f2 or like an f2.2 kind of how canon came out with the original rf85 f2 well i shouldn't say original but their newer rf85 which came in at an f2 which i think is i mean it was decent uh i have a rokinon or a samyang 85 mil f1.4 and there's a lot of color fringing and a lot of ghosting at f1.4 plus you don't have weather sealing you don't have uh autofocus you don't have image stabilization plus that lens had macro capabilities but it's like 600 bucks um but i think canon maybe could have easily made this in f2 or like an f2.2 28 mil and maybe bump the price up a little bit more but i think for 300 bucks it's not bad uh, I hate that they're so expensive because I still think that $300 is a little more out of my price range than I want to spend on a small pancake lens like this. And it really only has use case scenarios for like landscape, street photography. Uh, you, you could do portraits with it, I think, um, if you like that kind of wider angled portrait look. And then, I mean, for a small lens that you can throw in a bag for documentary work, uh, you probably could do a little bit of logging with it um, if you held your arm all the way out like this super, super far away um, if you're doing documentaries interviews and stuff like that I think this is a good lens because it's small you can keep the camera a little bit closer and you don't really necessarily have to have a whole lot of space between people if you're using like a 50 or an 85 for a talking headshot lens so, and then plus, I mean, if you're shooting in 4K, you can always crop in. So there's that. So at the end of the day, I think that this is a good lens for anybody that just wants a smaller lens for, you know, street photography, landscape photography. If you do portraits and stuff like that, or if you're into astrophotography, I think that it's not a bad price for that stuff. I just think it's a little bit for myself, um, especially because it's a, a wider, like single kind of use scenario lens. And then, if I were going to buy that lens, I would use it as a talking headshot lens, but that's just me. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's not bad, especially like I said, if you do real estate, I think that you could throw this in your bag, put it on a gimbal or or do photos with it inside the house and get a little bit more of a detailed shot. So anyways, if you guys like this video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If you didn't like this video, also give it a thumbs up, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit all the buttons. I'm Jordan and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.